Hello, and welcome to this introduction to Scopus. In this tutorial, I'll show you how to do a keyword search in Scopus. Our sample topic for today is the relationship between climate change and coral bleaching of the Great Barrier Reef. So like with any database, it's a good idea to search for each co concept separately and then combine them at the end. So I'll put in some terms for my first concept on the search line. You'll notice that I've put double quotation marks around these uh, terms because they have two or more words. Um, I also join similar terms for the same concept with all and then click search. Don't be put off if you get a large number of search results for any of the searches you do for your key concepts as these will be greatly reduced when you combine your concepts. I then click search at the top of the page again, click reset to clear the line and then put in the search term for my next concept. I click search again, reset the line and type in the search term for my last concept. I click search one last time, reset, and then I can see my search history. I now want to combine the results of these searches for my different concepts with AND. So I'll click in the boxes next to them and then click on combine queries. You can see just above, it's going to combine lines three, two, and one with AND. I then go show results and I have 144 results. In order to filter my search results in Scopus, you apply limits on the left-hand side of the page. If you want to filter by year, you physically have to click against the particular years that you want to include. You can see who the key authors in the field are, and if you want to go straight to their articles, you simply click on the number next to their name. You can refine by broad subject area, but I don't tend to do this, as many relevant articles can be multidisciplinary. Under document type, article refers to journal article and review to literature review, scoping review, systematic review, and so on. You can also refine by grade literature, for example, conference papers, reports, and so on. If you're interested in the output of a particular country or to see which countries are leading the way in this area, you can filter by country or territory and also by language. The field that Scopus really shines in is this keyword one. I'm going to click view more and view all. And then you'll see a complete list of keywords that have been assigned to the various articles in this results list. This will give you other ideas for similar and related terms for your key concepts that you can then use in another search. You can filter directly to these, um, but I suggest you just add them to your table of similar and related terms and construct a new search. Once you've applied all, all of your filters, you click on limit two. This brings it down to 63. From the results page, I can do a number of things. Scopus uh, default sort setting is by date, newest to oldest. I can change this to the highest cited if I wish, as I've already refined by date. I can click on the articles that have cited a particular article simply by clicking on this number on the right hand side under cited by. Related documents means documents that share some of the same references as the one you're looking at. I can click on view abstract to read the abstract and see if it meets my needs even before I click on the title to go to full text. To find full text, you can click on check for full text at UTAS or view at publisher. 
When I click on the title of the document, under the abstract, I can see the keywords that have been assigned to this article. Once again, this is a great way to see if I'm on track and also to get ideas for alternative terms I can use in another search. If you're using reference management software such as EndNote, Zotero or Mendeley, you can select the particular results you wish to export by clicking in the boxes next to those articles. You can select just the articles on a particular page or select all and then click export. For EndNote and Zotero, choose the RIS format and for Mendeley, the Mendeley option. Select the information you want to be taken over to your library and then click export. A file will appear in the bottom left hand corner of your screen if you're using Windows or in your downloads if you're on a Mac. Simply click on this file and those records will automatically be added to, uh, to your library. Now all databases give you the option to create an account so that you can save your search. This is really important because you don't want to spend a long time uh, putting together different combinations of keywords to find the best results, only to lose your search history when you close that window. So to create an account in Scopus, click Create Account in the top right-hand corner of the screen. You can either use your personal email or your UTAS email there, click continue, and then you'll be asked to create a password. If you are using your UTAS email address, it's a good idea to use a different password to the one you use for UTAS, just for security purposes. Then you can go back to your search history and decide which of these searches you wish to save. You click on the box next to the ones you wish to save, and then go to the three dots on the far right hand side where it says more and go save this search. If you're not already signed in, this will prompt you to sign in or to create an account, and then you'll be able to save your search. You can also set an alert for a particular search strategy, and then you'll be notified if new publications are added that meet your search criteria. If you do have any questions about searching Scopus or any of our databases, feel free to contact us via the library homepage. Click on Learning and Research Librarians, and you can either give us a call, send us an email, or book an appointment. All the best with your search.